Hello, everyone, and welcome to our spring edition of Topic Tuesday webinars. We're excited that you're joining us today. We've got some great panelists that are going to share with you how to interact with ACT and how to utilize it as a professional and for your students. So as we've got people joining us this morning, we've got a welcome question to familiarize yourself with the platform. So just that, so that you know, there are some housekeeping tips. Um, we cannot see or hear you since we are in webinar mode, but we still wanna interact with you. So feel free to use the chat feature if you have something you'd like to share directly with any of the panelists today and communicate with them that way. If you have questions about any topic that relates to what is being presented or what you have brought to the conversation, you can do that in the Q&A feature. So questions go in Q&A, any specific tech issues or communication to the panelists goes in chat. So let's try that chat feature out really quickly. We've got an introductory question we wanna to pose to you. What questions do you have about the ACT process or services that are offered for ACT? So if you'll drop your answer in the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. We've got a great variety of panelists today. We're going to talk about different ways that you and your students will be able to interact with ACT. We're excited that you're joining us. So if you'll drop in the chat, what questions do you have about the ACT process or services that are offered for ACT? All right, we've got some questions that are coming in um, and I'm sure our panelists will make sure and address these in their presentation or we've got Q&A time at the very end. Um, so some things that are coming in, any updates on individual subject tests? Are there more sample lessons available online? What practice and study materials are available at low or no cost? So I know that we'll be covering a lot of these things already by our presenters. So we will let our presenters go ahead and get started. Shannon? Good morning. Welcome everyone to the webinar. I'm Shannon Grinsley and I'm the Director of State Outreach for the Woodward Hines Education Foundation and the Get to College program. We are recording today's session and we will send a link to anyone who is registered. For those watching the recording, today's date is January 12th, 2020 and the material in this webinar is current through the 2021 school year. In today's session, how to interact with ACT, you will hear from ACT representatives and get to college representatives who will give you lots of great information about the ACT process and ACT resources for your students. I will now share a little background on get to college and a few logistics about the webinar before we get started. Get to college is a nonprofit program of the Woodward Hines Education Foundation. We have three centers in Mississippi, one in Jackson, Ocean Springs, and South Haven. And we help parents, students, and high school counselors with all aspects of college planning and financial aid. And of course, all of our services are 100% completely free. In our centers, we offer personalized college counseling appointments where we can tell students when to apply for admission and scholarships, help fill out their FAFSA, which is our favorite thing and what we are constantly doing at this time of year at Get to College, or we can also help advise on essay writing and interviewing. For, um, for this past fall semester, and unfortunately looks like into the spring semester, we are offering all of our services at Get to College in a virtual manner. This will include the counselor webinar series for the spring that you're taking part in right now, and all other professional development opportunities, student and parent workshops, remote FAFSA completion, and two-way texting. So as Kirsten said earlier, we are in webinar mode, so we cannot see or hear you, but you can ask us questions um, through the chat or the Q&A at any time. So this is our agenda for the day. Um, we just had our introduction and then we'll have our presentation on how to interact with ACT. We will have some time at the end for um, Q&A um, to answer any of those questions that y'all put into chat that might not have been covered. And then we'll talk about some of our upcoming webinars and give you our contact information. 
Um, I will be hosting the presentation today, um, kind of leading things uh, along. And then Kirsten Dufour that you heard from earlier will be um, working on things from the back end and making sure that all your questions are answered and brought to the panelists. So I would now like to introduce our speakers for the day. And we have three presenters today. Our first presenter is Wes Gentry. Wes is an ACT senior account executive serving K through 12 schools in, the, in districts in Mississippi and North Florida. Wes has worked at ACT for the past eight years. Our second presenter will be Randy Lindell. Randy is the director of Gear Up Outreach in Mississippi and serves on the Mississippi ACT State Council. And last but not least, our in-house get to college ACT guru, Stephen Brown. He's the assistant director of outreach for the Jackson Get to College Center and he leads all of the get to college ACT student workshops, student workshops and teacher trainings, which we'll talk to you all about later. So I am going to um, turn my video off and I'm going to stop share and I'm going to turn it over to Wes. Hey, thank you all. Let me share my screen and then I'll... Okay, and Shannon, just to confirm, you can hear me and y'all can see my screen, correct? Yes, we can. Okay, and so you can see the screen that says test scores and reports and Pearson Access Next. Great. Yes. Okay, thank you. Hey, thanks all. Uh, it's a smaller group. I recognize some familiar names. Uh, Kirsten, uh, Stephen, Brandy, Shannon, thank you all for having me. Uh, Get to College is awesome. Truly is a great organization, and I really appreciate what y'all do for students across Mississippi. Thank you for always uh, including us and asking us to be a part of your programs. Uh, thank y'all, and thank y'all for joining today. Um, I'll Hey, how to interact with ACT. So I'm going to try to address a couple of quick questions that I know you all have and that I've seen in the chat. And then I wanted to show you basically the ACT online reporting portal. I hope some of you are already in there, but just in case some of you are not or didn't know a couple of things, you're just mainly maybe doing one or two things. And I wanted to show you a couple of others. Um, that was that is my goal so i want to answer some questions and show you the act success online reporting portal um many of you have questions about super scoring when is that going to happen um we noticed that many kids had multiple act accounts and that likely is one of the reasons why getting in touch with ACT is so difficult or is because many kids in the fall were having my ACT issues and many have duplicate accounts. And when you have duplicate accounts, there are many issues that result. It's hard to send scores from different accounts and you're logging into one and not seeing scores. So that was a complicating factor among many and is part of the reason why so many folks are having a hard time getting through. And I'm gonna address that in a, a moment as well, but super scoring is coming. It's just, it's, I don't know exactly when, I don't have an exact date. I know that we have in a, a, a fix for the uh, multiple account issues. So we have a merge accounts fix. I believe that's ongoing right now that we've rolled out. Super scoring will, hopefully follows soon after, but we needed to, we need to get a handle on all of the merged, all of the multiple accounts in order to get an accurate super score for students. So super scoring is coming. I just cannot give you an exact date. Um, so we thought it was going to be in the fall at different stages. I would assume it's coming this winter, early spring, but just haven't heard an exact date. I've seen questions on, is ACT going to proceed with the section test? So back in the summer, last summer, we announced that we were halting two things. We were halting the move to online testing as an option for National Saturday. And with that, we were halting the ability to take a section retest. Um, you, when section retesting rolls out, the only way to do that would be to take the test online. We'll still offer paper ACT or 
that that was our plans. But this summer with COVID issues and social distancing limiting the capacity at many sites and just being a complicating factor of offering offering the ACT online being a complicating factor to take the test, we said, hey, we're, we're halting that rollout. Again, we have not yet announced a, a date. And if you had to make me guess, I would guess it would not happen this school year at all, but no one has told me that. Um, again, if I, that, that's just a guess, it did not happen this school year. Typically we try to roll things out at the beginning of each school year, um, but we have not yet heard any, re, uh, any plans to go forward uh, with section retesting or, um, or um, online testing for national Saturday test dates. We did increase the number of fee waivers that students are eligible for up to four. So if students are individually eligible for fee waivers, we've increased that to four uh, fee waivers. So I saw a, um, I saw a question or uh, I won't call out the person, but um, I, I saw a question about, hey, I'm holding with ACT for two hours and how, how do I get around that? One, I'm sorry, uh, the, some of the wait times are simply embarrassing, and I apologize for the troubles that some folks are having reaching ACT. So I, I certainly cannot answer all questions. I, I just can't, unfortunately, but I, at the same time, if you are having problems getting specific questions answered, especially regarding specific students, and you tried, you know, you tried self-help as much as possible, please send them my way. So um, you're welcome to send a student issue my way. I do have an escalation path and will request that that be done. So while you are having issues getting through uh, to our folks, please send them my way and I will um, escalate those. Now, with that said, you are welcome. You have my permission. There are only 20 something folks on this call. You have my permission to follow up with me every day or so. Hey, Wes, have you escalated this? I it, Things have been crazy. Uh, I'm much like y'all, for y'all, it has been crazy for us. So I am uh, have a lot of things right now that I'm juggling and managing and so, you are always welcome to follow up with me and just say, hey, did you did you escalate this? That's not a bother. It just puts it right back at the top of the plate for me. So sorry to spend so much time on that, but I know that reaching out to ACT is difficult and I'm sorry, but genuinely I am and I want to help as much as possible. So again, if there are issues that you just need escalating, feel free to send them to me. And then too, I can answer some questions, um, but you know, I can answer some general questions that you might have. Again, feel always feel free to follow up. Don't don't kill me if I don't respond, but feel free to, to ping me and I'm happy that you did ping me again. All right. So so that's that. Any questions actually, Shannon, that have come through since, you're welcome to ask them now before I move on to the online reporting portal if you have one that you think needs uh, answering or Kirsten. Um, nothing that hasn't been addressed other than appreciation that was sent to you from counselors and thank you for all of that so far. Yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, and my email is sorry is west.gentry. So W E S dot G E N T R Y at A C T dot org. West dot gentry at ACT dot org. All right. So Back in March, um, I've talked to some of you, but maybe some of you haven't heard this. Back in March, ACT rolled out the ACT Success portal, online reporting portal for schools and districts in Mississippi. And for you private schools, that happened this summer. It was, should have happened in March, but it happened this past summer. So now all schools and districts, public or private, should have access into ACT success. And if you need help, I would suggest um, emailing me and let's set a time to talk because I'd rather talk this out with you and get you access. It, that is for that is for school schools and districts who you think no one at your school or district has access. 
So if you're a di if you're a public school, if you don't think anybody in your district has access, please reach out to me. If you think people have access, you should reach out to them because they can grant you access to this portal. So if the district has set up access into ACT success, they should be able to grant school staff access. If you're a public school or a district that doesn't have access, I'm sorry, if you're a private school or a district who doesn't have access to the ACT success, uh, please reach out to me and let's coordinate our next steps. You're probably wondering, where do I go? Success.act.org. And I don't think you put in www. It's the secure. So it's HTTPS, HTTPS, um, backslash, backslash, success.act.org. Success.act.org is the site. Once you have access and log in to ACT Success, this is what appears. There are four uh, banners that appear. And you see one that says ACT test scores and reports. That is where you will be able to see all national or weekday testing results. So all national or weekday testing results should be here. If you're only seeing weekday test results, so if y'all participate in state testing or if you're a private school district testing the weekday test experience, and that's all you're seeing in the portal, it's likely that, again, the district or the private school has not truly activated all of the, um, the access into this system. There's an access used. And so I, I know I'm kind of talking through some of this stuff that may not make sense, but uh, there, there is the possibility that you have access into this, but that you're just seeing the weekday test results. And I wanna make sure that you're seeing the uh, national test scores as well. I'm gonna show you that. But there's two other banners in here. One is Pearson Access Next, that we're just trying to have a single sign-on, uh, well, we're trying to have a one-stop shop for you to go and then, hey, here's all your other links because I know we have a lot of portals of resources. So Pearson Access Next is where you would go to administer the statewide ACT or the ACT weekday test experience district testing. So it's not a single sign-on for PA Next. You would sim it just simply takes you to the login page and you would have to enter your login credentials for PA Next. The test accessibility and accommodation system, that is where uh, school staff upload ACT approved uh, supporting documentation for ACT approved accommodations. So this is a single sign on. So once you're in success and you click on this TAA banner, I'm not going to do it because it takes up time and everything. But once you do, you will go straight into the TA site. You won't have to log in and you should then be able to see your students and upload uh, supporting documentation or simply apply a test date. And I just wanna remind folks that even if kids for the ACT have been approved for the October test, you still need to go in and apply the test date for the subsequent um, test. So if they've applied for December, then you'll need to associate that December ACT test. Uh, for them. So because kids have already been approved for accommodations, that doesn't mean you don't have to do anything. You do need to go into TAA and actually apply the test date. All right, so let me get into test scores and reports. And i um, already pulled it up here. Um, let's see. So Wes, you while you're transitioning, we had a question come in pertinent to this. Um, it's yeah. It was asking, are you saying that there is a district level access? Um, this person works with all high schools. Um, do they need to ask every high school for access or get a district access for the success portal? Yep, great question. Thanks, Kirsten, for asking that. Um, no, this actually was if you're a public school district, the district actually was invited. The schools really weren't. Um, initially they the so the ideally the superintendent has designated tr a trusted agent a trusted agent is the highest level of access in ACT success so there's three user roles one is trusted agent two is detail viewer detail viewer the third is summary viewer and I actually don't find a ton of value in the whole summary viewer role um, so trusted agent or detailed viewer, 
trusted agent can see everything. So if you're a trusted agent at the district level, you can see all of your high school's data. Um, and you can also invite or approve other users. So, you know, it's possible that Ms. Smith at Jones High actually, you know, applies for an ACT success account and that district person who's a trusted agent will actually approve uh, Mrs. Smith's uh, account and access. And you can have multiple trusted agents at the district level. And then you could have multiple trusted agents at the high school. A trusted agent at the high school can simply just see the high school's data, uh, but they can also invite or approve other users. I know I'm kind of getting in the weeds, but just trying to give you a, an idea of that. Um, let me show you really quickly, and I'm going to stop, uh, Kirsten, because I want to uh, be mindful of my time. This is the data interaction tool, and there's three things I want to show you. One, you can enter a student. You, you can enter a student's last name. I'm going to enter their first name because every kid in the system is John Doe, and we actually put John OO or John OO7. So let's go John OO. Oh, and when you do, you will actually see John O.O. Doe, and you can see the test, um, the two test experiences that John O.O. Doe has had. And if you click over here on the left hand side, highlighted in blue, you will see the individual student score report. So you quickly, if you want to just find one student, the easiest way is to go up in the search box, search by last name, ideally, because you shouldn't have a lot of kids with the same last name like we do in our demo portal. And so the easiest way is to find that student and then quickly you're able to see all of the test instances that that student has and you're able to click um, here to actually see the individual PDF. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you is how to search for an individual student. The second thing that I want to show you is that um, you can search by just your weekday testing, which would be state contract or district contract, or if you want to see all national or weekday test results, you can make sure that you're under ACT all data. So ACT all data means you have access to weekday or national test results for your high school students or your district students if you're a district official. If you want to run, so if you want to run a roster report uh, list of students who've taken the ACT in a given school year or the previous four years, so our previous three years. So we have four years worth of data in the portal right now, and I'm going to show you that. So if you want to run a roster report of just this school year, you would highlight 2021 school year and choose the high school or the district, either one. Or if you want to run four years worth of data, you just simply click on the years and it adds, we'll run a roster report of all students who have tested in the last four years with the ACT. What you're doing when you select the 2021 school year, this, what you're doing is you're choosing all the students who've tested with the ACT since September 2020 all the way to July 2021. It doesn't matter if those kids are seniors or freshmen. If they tested in this school year, those are the population of students that you're going to get. Anybody who tested in the school year in the 2021 school year is who you're going to get, whether they're freshmen or sophomores. This is not grad class. This is freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or seniors. So you click get report. And now you have a roster report. So the second thing I wanted to show you is how to get a list of your students who've taken the ACT in a given school year. And this is your, this is a list. The third thing, if you wanted to print out each, the, all the reports, and I'm not suggesting that you do this, but many people do want to have printed out reports for their students. You would go up here to the student um, icon. So this person icon labeled student and click on that and then this generates a very large pdf of all of the score reports that are in your list so there were 24 students in my roster report and you can see there are 24 pages so that is each page is considered a report 
um, you can download this. So I just want to show you that here's John 309, here's John 527. So these are individual students. Um, people have asked, hey, how do I get that whole uh, roster report? How do I get all of those PDFs in one single, or all of those score reports in one single PDF? And that's how to do it. Click on student. And then if you want to download this, you simply click on download and you would download all pages. For you large high schools, you can only download 100 pages at a time. So you might want to do custom and 1 to 100 or 1 to 99, 100 to 199, things like that. So, so that's how to um, get all of your PDF or all of your score reports in one PDF by clicking on the student icon after you've run a roster report. And the third thing I want to show you is how to, you've got a roster report. Now, how do I determine all the kids who've got a 29 on the ACT or scored a 29 ACT composite score? And I'm really just touching the tip of the iceberg really with this, but just trying to give you ideas of what you can do with this. So you've got a roster report here. And if you go to options in the upper right, it opens up a box with four tabs across the top. Fields and scores, these are data points that you can add to your view. I have a certain amount of columns right now. If I want to add a column, fields and scores allow me to add a column. And I went to fields, I added test location, I click update, and now test location actually populates um, on my column. You might be saying, hey, what does blank mean beside October 2020? And what does state mean besides September 2020? If test location is blank, that means that was a national, i.e. Saturday test experience. And if it says state or district, that means that was a weekday test opportunity that your school or district offered in that given school month. So we know that we had some uh, makeup state testing in September in Mississippi and this so if it was a weekday ACT as part of the makeup, it would say state here for September 2020. So I like adding test location because it helps you determine, well, was this an October national test or an October weekday test that we give as part of district testing? So that's right, one so of we the have one question while you're in this space of the filter that just came through. Um, someone asked, how do you print a roster report for one specific test date? For example, like the December test date. Great question. And that is perfectly done. Thank you so much. So fields and scores doesn't change the data in front of you. It just uh, it doesn't change the parameters of the data. It just adds columns and data points. Filter and search is how you drill down to do what Kirsten just asked me to do. So let me do, um, so if I wanna find just the October testers, I would go to search. So you're drilling down. You've got your data in front of you. Now you wanna drill down and find just the kids who took the October test. So you can um, do search and from the drop down menu, choose scroll down and find test date and contains so I would add October 2020 here. Uh, uh, sorry. So test date contains October 20. Click add because you're adding that as your parameter and then click update. And now all of these students that you're seeing in front of you are just your October testers. And if you wanted to save this report, you can. And if you save this early on, as you're still getting scores, the reports that you save are dynamic. So if we add 10 kids to the system tonight and eight of them tested in October, and you save this as a uh, October 2020 testers, if eight of them um, tested in October, then you would, the report would update. And I'll show you where the, I'll show you in just a minute, like one minute. I've got one minute left and I'll, I'll show you where to find that report. But the other thing I wanted to show you is how to drill down to just your, like a kid scoring a 29. So again, you would go to search. I deleted the filter for October. You go to search and instead of choosing test date contains October, 2020, I want to find all the kids who maybe 
or meeting the MASG scholarship, or maybe a community college scholarship with a composite score of a 21, whatever it is, you would go down and find composite score of at least, and I'm going to do I'm going to do 21 just because I'm not sure that we have any kids in here on the 29. Actually, well, yeah, I'll do 21. So composite score of at least a 21. I click add and then I click update. And now I have 16 kids that have a composite score of at least the 21. But if I put that same parameter as a composite score of at least a 29, I can save this report as, so let me just do that really quickly for you. Um, and so I, again, I go to search, I find a composite score of at least a 29. I click add and I click update. And now all the kids that I am looking at have a 29 composite score. I can save this and label it M-E-S-G. I can save it. And when the February test scores come in, if you have 10 kids that have a 29, they will be added to this report over here on the data interaction homepage on the left hand side. Kirsten, thanks for my time. I'm so sorry to go over. Um, I'll be here throughout uh, answering any chat questions that people have. Thank you, Wes. That was great and very useful for um, our participants today. Thanks again, Wes. I so appreciate you joining us today. I learned um, quite a bit uh, myself, so thanks again. Hi, everyone. Brandy Lindell. I'm the director of Gear Up Outreach for Get to College. And you also heard Shannon mention earlier that I'm on the Mississippi ACT State Council. So you're probably thinking, what is that? What I want to talk to you about first today is joining Mississippi State Orgs. So I am on the board for Mississippi State Orgs. That is what the Mississippi State Council is for ACT. And this is a specific group of educators from high schools, community colleges, four-year colleges, workforce, all in Mississippi. And that's what makes this Mississippi State Orgs group so special is that it is Mississippi specific. So it is all about ACT and all that ACT offers from Aspire, pre-ACT, the ACT and work keys. So it's all of the products that you learn about that are offered through ACT, but it's through a lens of the state of Mississippi. Now, there are leadership opportunities, as I just mentioned, that you, know, you could be a member of state orgs and you could be on the council. But what I really wanna talk about today is you just simply joining the state organization as a member. It's absolutely free. You are able to get communication through the um, state portal. Um, Kirsten is putting in the chat so that you have the links to join state orgs. And basically, not only does it give you uh, access to hear from ACT, but it gives you opportunities to interact with ACT, for you to ask questions, for you to pose specific challenges in Mississippi, because ACT is worldwide, but I think it's really important that we look at it here in Mississippi for our students and what we have going on here and the challenges and the opportunities that we have in the state. So if, if you don't hear anything else I say today, I want you to know how important joining state orgs can be for you as you're interacting with ACT and learning. Now, on a more national level, you can request a counselor newsletter. That is um, something that you can sign up for, get on the listserv for ACT, and it has a national or even a, a worldwide spin. So the focus is that everyone across the country 
or in different countries are receiving the same counselor newsletter. Um, but that certainly has merit as well. So um, make sure that you request, if, if you want to stay on top of all the updates, the changes, I think that throughout this semester, we have truly learned that it is important to stay on top of the, the differences that are happening um, day to day, week to week when it comes to a pandemic and what changes can happen to affect our students and parents and our schools. And so these are two really good ways that you'll be able to connect with ACT and stay up to date. So thank you, Kirsten, for putting that in the chat. And so you can use those links to sign up. So now I want to talk um, not necessarily about how you as educators can connect with ACT, but I want to talk about how students and parents can connect with ACT. I so appreciate Wes offering his email address and I have always found working with ACT that anyone that works with ACT, they're very helpful and accessible. But I want to talk about how I recommend students and parents interact with ACT. And we have had a lot of questions, as you have this year, because of COVID and the pandemic on how's the best way to get answers and help from ACT. I, first and foremost, if you have a question that comes up from a student or parent, I personally go to the frequently asked questions on the website act.org, it's amazing. They have every single question that you could possibly imagine and how it relates to COVID and how it may relate in general to your student. So first and foremost, I would tell students and parents, go to the frequently asked questions on the ACT website first, okay? Now, if you go to the FAQ website and that's not available or you have a very student specific or score specific question. There is a contact form that your student and your parents can fill out. I have used this contact form with students. There was a, a student that Stephen and I both were working with, Stephen Brown from Gets College, where both of us were working with, and it was a problem like Wes mentioned earlier, where she had two ACT accounts and she used two email addresses, two different email addresses. So yes, I mean, that has certainly been a problem with the transitioning to my ACT. And so that was nothing that I could help her with. That was not anything that Wes could help her with. But we needed to make sure that we facilitated the process to get, the, get it fixed. So there's a contact form um, and it asks specific questions about the student and what the problem is. And within 24 hours, that student received a response. So I felt like that was a great way to solve the problem. ACT then helped her merge her accounts. And so I was very pleased and I thought that was excellent customer service. Um, you know, I guess I'm sort of from the generation that the last thing I'm gonna do is make a phone call. I'm gonna try and solve as much of my problems or challenges through the web. Um, but I know that that is not always a comfort level for everyone. So yes, you can call ACT. Um, we have seen that you have to wait. Um, you may have to have patience. Uh, they may not be able to help you immediately. And then I would say email with. So I think it's just important that we look at the different ways that ACT has um, put information out there, allowed us to interact with them, and they are willing and able to solve the problems. I think the amount of questions and the amount of people trying to connect with ACT can be overwhelming. And so I think taking it one step at a time and trying to figure out exactly the question that the student or parent has will guide you in the best way that they should contact ACT. And of course know that at Get to College, we are also willing um, and able to help you. So um, I wanna you know, say the same thing Wes Gentry said, email us. Um, I'm Brandy Lindell at gettocollege.org. 
I'm happy to help you. I'm happy to help your students and or your parents. So reach out to us. We are a partner with ACT and we want your students and your parents and your schools and districts to be successful as well. So just know that we're here for you and we can also be a, a wonderful resource when it comes to everything ACT. Thanks so much for the opportunity, um, Shannon. All right, and thanks again, Brandy. My name is Stephen Brown. I'm the Assistant Director of Outreach for the Jackson Get to College Center. And um, I conduct the, the majority, at least, of our ACT prep workshops that we do within our centers, uh, which we're doing now virtually. So I'm not going to take up very much time at all. I'm going to give you a brief overview of these six items and, um, and how we're addressing them, or how we're using them, rather. So the first one is uh, our ACT prep workshops, which we would typically do in person, but since for the last at least year, we've been doing them virtually. Um, so the next one's gonna be January 23rd. It's a four hour workshop. It's on a Saturday from nine to one. We cover all four subjects of the test and uh, just strictly focus on strategies for students to score higher. So there is a good bit of, of content being taught as well but the vast majority of it is gonna be strategies and ways to demystify the ACT so that students can um, earn their highest possible score. Uh, like I said, the next one's gonna be um, January 23rd. After that, the next one will be April 10th. So we try to pretty much have those uh, coinciding with the ACT test dates, the national test dates. So these workshops are typically a week or two weeks uh, before that. Uh, next thing is take action on the ACT guidebook, and that is a tips and strategies booklet that we typically have printed copies of. And if we were in person, we would, you know, give those to students at the workshops. But all this stuff is available, uh, and we have digital copies that we can share with students that they can print for themselves or they can just view it online. But it's like I said, a composition of all the tips and strategies that we've compiled into one workbook. Um, the ACT prep videos on YouTube. So we have some individual tips and strategy videos. Some of them are about one to two minutes, maybe as much as three minutes, where they're really quick tips and ways to, um, like I said, take the shortest route to getting an answer as opposed to full explanations of the content where, like I said, we're trying to teach students shortcuts as well. Those are available on the website. Um, a lot of students need extra practice tests, though, and of course, the ACT has the preparing for the ACT practice booklets. Um, so just to let you know, even though it's the they're cycled the same test questions for three years in three in three year cycles. So um, it'll be this even though it's a different cover, it will be the same questions from like 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21 be the same questions, for example. And then the next year, it will be a new set of questions, a new uh, practice test. But we do have, um, I know as far as get to college, we have at least about six practice tests and possibly even more than that. Um, and this is all stuff that's available online, but in, we, all we've done is compile it so that you can get it at one place. Um, there's also the ACT prep resource kit, which uh, students will have access to when they sign up for our workshops. But then we also have it available on our website. And that is everything from, um, I wouldn't say cheat sheets, but more so like a, a summary of the tips and strategies that they would get from the workshops. And so there's a, a quiz, a pre-quiz and a post-quiz, one that's more so about the general strategies and then one that goes into more of the content on the, uh, on the test. But that's available in the resource kit. There's the practice test, a part of the resource kit um, there's also ACT English tips, so all the, the different uh, grammar and sentence structure and punctuation rules that they would typically see on the ACT, uh, that's available as well on, in that resource kit. And yeah, there's, there's just a, a ton of stuff that you can print out and actually use with your class. I've used some of that information with students as young as about seventh grade. So. Um, it's definitely definitely applicable and you have access to all that. And then the last thing is ACT prep educator training. So it's in our, our um, 
menu of professional development services uh, on February 10th this year is when we'll be doing the ACT teacher training. We typically do them once a semester and all this stuff is done virtually. Once again, um, that one would actually be from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, so it's just a three hour workshop where we not only cover the same tips and strategies that we cover when we do the student workshops, but once again, it's important for us to conduct them the same way that we do the students because we all know there's it's one thing to be able to to know information, but then to be able to break it down and teach it to someone, you have to know it on a different level. So we actually walk you through, this is how I would explain this strategy to a 15 year old. So it's um, like I said, it's not only just the content, but also the instruction uh, methods and the instruction style. Uh, but those are um, some of the, the services that we offer at Get to College, and we hope to see you uh, participate in them. The students' workshops that we have, they open a month. The registration opens a month before each workshop. So as the next one is going to be um, January 23rd, registration has been open since December 23rd. Uh, the next workshop is going to be April 10th. Registration will open on March 10th for that workshop. Yeah, so we hope you're able to participate in them. All right. Well, Kirsten, did we have any um, questions that need to be addressed at this point? The only thing um, that I think, and I'm going to post this to Stephen, would be, are there some sample lessons available online that you would recommend for ACT teachers? So one thing that, uh, okay, yeah, I'm not muted. Um, let me mention this. Thank you for asking that, Kirsten. What I have found to be most helpful for the, the ACT instructors that have you know, worked with us in the past is actually witnessing the ACT prep workshop that we conduct for students. Now, I know that the Saturday works out for a lot of students, but some students aren't able to make it or log on to their Zoom for whatever reason. So we typically record those ACT prep workshops that we do for students. And that cloud recording is available for 30 days. So when we do have teachers or students say, well, I, I just want a refresher or I want to, you know, I took a lot of notes, but I want to see exactly uh, if there was anything else that I missed. Or if it's a teacher that says, I want to see how I would deliver this message to a student, the best thing to help you would be to uh, actually watch that ACT prep workshop. So once again, after January 23rd or on January 23rd, when we uh, do that workshop, we're gonna record that, that Zoom meeting and it'll be available for you. We just can't post it publicly, but if you were to email me, um, I can send it to you. And I guess Kirsten's gonna put my email in the chat also, but it's sbrown at gettocollege.org. And besides that, there's a ton of stuff on the resource page as well for teachers in the meantime. Thanks, Stephen. Um, we haven't had any other questions come in at this point. If you'll drop them in the Q&A, um, we'll get those addressed. But at this point, it looks like we've answered everything. All right. Well, thank you so much. Stephen, are you trying to ask something? No, this is Wes. I was... Uh, potentially going to address something if I if I can because I want I forgot to mention something is that okay Shannon? yes go ahead okay um so um I wanted a, there was a question that came in I think really early about what are free resources y'all have a lot um that, that is awesome. One thing I meant to explain or tell is that um, fee waiver students have access to, to this uh, new resource called the Self-Paced Course powered by Kaplan. So we used to have this program product that students and families could purchase called ACT Online Prep. And that was about $40 for the average family. And fee waiver kids had access to that for free. Starting this school year, we switched uh, to the self-paced course powered by Kaplan that is now at more of a basically a $99 cost for the average 
uh, student and family, but it's free to fee waiver students. So the ACT self-paced course powered by Kaplan is uh, free to fee waiver students. And uh, somebody told me that when kids use a fee waiver code, um, you know, not only is the test wiped out, but the, the um, ACT self-paced course powered by Kaplan is put in their cart and that's zeroed out, but it shows the value of it. And somebody was like, yeah, it's over a hundred dollars. And so I just wanted y'all to know that your fee waiver kids, when they register, they get access to that. And we are likely emailing their email account that's associated with their ACT, their my ACT account. We're emailing uh, their email account with login credentials for the self-paced course powered by Kaplan. So just wanted y'all to know that. Um, and ACT Academy is, has, is going away. Um, ACT Academy has been free to everyone. And what we've done is we've taken some of those resources and put them in the My ACT account for students. So there actually is a preparation feature within My ACT that is free for all students. And we've taken pieces of ACT Academy and put it in there uh, in My ACT. But we have actually, um, we have done away with the teacher account in ACT Academy. So I just didn't want to catch any of y'all by surprise. That was just done recently. So if they hadn't logged in, if any of your teachers are using that and haven't logged in. So sorry to steal the show, but just wanted to um, let y'all know that because I thought that was uh, important information. Thanks, Shane. Perfect. Thank you, Wes. Steven, did you have one other comment? Unmute yourself. Okay. Yes. Um, my comment was actually about, excuse me. Um, I want to make sure that all, everyone's familiar with TIR and actually taking advantage of that too. Um, something called test information release that ACT offers where if students take the April, June, or December ACT, the national test dates, um, it costs $22, but I actually, actually send them the entire test booklet. They'll see all the questions. Uh, which ones they missed and what the correct answer should have been. So they'll know exactly what they need to study before they take it again. And that has been one of the most helpful uh, tools that ACT offers when I work with students individually that they could take advantage of. Um, this year, because of COVID and the April test was for a lot of students was canceled. So they actually extended that this year, whereas the June, July and December tests are uh, available to get that test information released. Um, so if any of your students did take it in one of those months, they have up to six months after the test where they can still order that test information release uh, and see what they missed. And the, the way I use it with students, and this will be left hand sex, I know we're out of time, but um, I'll have them go, I'll have them order that test information release and go through it to see which ones they missed and uh, which ones were just like careless errors, like, oh, okay, I see what I did wrong on that one. I'm not so much worried about those, but if they're like, okay, number 20, they say the answer is J. I have no idea why they're saying J is the correct answer. I tell them, okay, we'll circle those that you don't understand and we can go over those together. But that way we can pinpoint exactly what it is the students are struggling with and not uh, waste our time. So. Great. Thank you, Stephen. That's definitely a great point. Uh, I use that same strategy. Um, thanks to Stephen with my high school senior and it was very helpful. So thank you all to, um, to Wes and Stephen and to Brandy. Uh, this is a very informative and helpful presentation. We will email all of you the recording for this webinar in the next couple of days and post it on our YouTube channel. We would appreciate it if you would complete the short survey that will automatically pop up at the end of this meeting. Please take the time to fill this out as it gives us feedback on today's webinar so we, we can keep improving. So this was the first of our Spruton series of Topic Tuesdays. Many of you participated last fall, so we are continuing the survey. Um, stay tuned, or the series. Stay tuned for our next Topic Tuesday webinar, which will be this upcoming Tuesday, January the 19th. During that webinar, we will be hearing from Jim McHill the CEO of the Woodward Hines Education Foundation about the very interesting history of WEF. It really is very interesting. Um, and the grant making opportunities that we offer from our 
parent organization rep, and the newly approved att educational attainment goal for the state of Mississippi, which I think y'all will be very interested in hearing about. We will continue this webinar series throughout the spring semester. If you participate in five webinars, you will have the opportunity to apply for 0.5 CEUs. And if you participate in all 10 webinars, you will have the opportunity to apply for one full CEU. And I believe we're gonna be able to um, kind of piggyback on our fall webinars and continue giving CE, CEU credit. So if there were some of you who didn't attend enough webinars in the fall to get credit, you can continue with this series um, uh, trying to gain that CEU credit. So let me know if you have any questions about that. So the remaining webinars that we have for the spring, I think we have a really good um, series coming up uh, and they will include topics such as hearing about all the distinctive strengths of all the community colleges in Mississippi. We're gonna have all those colleges on deck so you can hear about their distinctive strengths and what makes um, their school special. We're also gonna have resource, a uh, series on resources for personal finance, best practices for working with homeless youth, college and career readiness, class resources, and student success resources. So we're looking forward to this spring. You can register for these webinars on the Get to College website. They are listed under the Educator tab and then choose Professional Development. While you are there registering, please check out all the other resources, some of which we've mentioned today, for you and your students listed under that education or that educator tab. A few other things that Get to College has coming up soon um, for, for professional development, um, FAFSA trainings. We're gonna offer two FAFSA trainings in January and February. And these are just um, two and a half hours long, but at the end of those two and a half hours, Hopefully you will know more about how to complete the FAFSA and kind of some tips and tricks with that so that you can help your students um, as they complete their FAFSAs this spring. Um, we will also have some optional CEU opportunities available if you attend those FAFSA trainings. So go to our website to register for those. We will also continue our college and career readiness teacher chats every month. Once a month, Kirsten will be leading those with college and career readiness teachers. And then as Stephen mentioned earlier, um, we have that one opportunity. So if you have teachers or educators in your school who are interested in the ACT instructor training, please make sure that they get online and register for that. And as you can see, we'll have some optional CEU opportunities for that as well. So here's our contact information. Most of y'all have this, but if y'all have any questions about anything we've presented today or anything in general, please let us know. And there are numbers for our South Haven, Jackson and Gulf Coast office. So thank you again for joining us today. Happy 2021. We look forward to this spring series and we hope to see you again next week. Have a great day.